Well, hey, y'all. Uh, you know, uh, when I started this this channel uh, called the Saxophone Factory, uh, I wanted just to hop into the uh, the, the Rubank uh, book, and I did, and re we recorded all of the Rubank Elementary methods, all the exercises, uh, so people would have a, a method to go by as they were going forward. But you know, so, sometimes we do. I don't, I, you don't, you don't mean to. Sometimes you do put the cart before the horse. And as I have had an influx of new students and new adult students in, you know, in my studio, it sort of hit me that I forgot some really important steps. So there's no, uh, no time like, like the present to go back and try to correct those errors um, and add how I think these things should be done. And frankly, I think it'll make your playing, you know, especially when you're just getting started, it'll make your playing easier. Uh, because we, I, as a matter of fact, I, I watched a student today, an adult student, struggle because we didn't get to go over enough on how to start with the simple stuff like your mouthpiece and your reed and how they go together. So we're going to do that right now. We're going to we'll talk about your mouthpiece, your reed, your neck. How to you know how to start? Uh, because if you, if, especially here, if you don't get a good start, you're going to learn a whole bunch of bad habits, and it's going to be really, really tough. And you know what? And we don't need it to be tough. So we're, here's, here's what we're going to do. Now, strangely enough, there is a massive, a massive amount of controversy on the thing that I'm going to show you first. Yeah, there really is. But before I do that, you have to excuse my mouthpiece. I've been playing on it. Oh, by the way, if you want to clean your mouthpiece, do not put it in boiling water. Do not. It will destroy your mouthpiece. Just don't do it. I, don't put it in the microwave. Don't. Just take some uh, warm uh, dish water and wash it out. Just like you, just like you would wash a fork. Don't put it in the dishwasher though, because the water's too hot, right? War like you just wash it out, and there you go. And some of the stuff you'll see on on my mouthpiece is just calcium from a face from my mouth. But I want to show you something. Let's see if I can show it to you here. We have the side rails here, and here, and on the top there. If you can see that. Across the top is a thing called a tip rail. Now, what happens is that the thin part of the reed on the top here, you see it, the thin part on the top touches the tip rail and then it bangs together with the tip rail, and that's what makes it, that's what makes the noise. And if you and if that noise gets made, it gets amplified through the pipe that is your instrument. That's how that works. Okay? Cool, cool, cool. Now, here's where the controversy comes in. Some people, and some people who, who are, I'm not saying that they're, I, I, I'm not saying that they're terrible teachers. I'm not, I'm not even saying they're necessarily telling, telling you something wrong. I'm just telling you what my experience as a, um, a private saxophone instructor for nearly the past 40 years has told me. Um, some will say, Take the when you put the reed on, put the reed. I mean, I mean, and they say this on clarinet too. Put the reed just a little bit over the mouthpiece like that. Well, maybe maybe not that much, right? Over the mouthpiece like that. Well, what happens then is you are playing uh, on. You are hoping the tip rail. Your, the reed is hitting on the tip rail on a little harder part of the reed, a little thicker part of the reed. You can, it's hard to see in the video uh, that the reed is getting thicker as it moves from here to there, right? Super thin, and then as it gets a little thicker, they're pl you're playing on a little thicker part of the reed. And if, you ha and you're, if your reed is too soft, it's too old, you've been playing on it for, for too long, then maybe that's something that you want to try. But if you're just starting and you're starting a brand new reed, here, here's where you want to be. You want to be, my opinion, if I can show this to you. 
you want to be perfectly even. You can see that, how it's even as flush with the top of the mouthpiece. Even that's a little high, right? And pull it so you can't see it. So it's flush with the top of the mouthpiece. Because then you have the thinnest part of the reed hitting against, hitting against the tip rail. And you are, more, you are more likely to be successful. Sometimes navigating ligatures can be tough too. Um, the ligature that I use is a Rovner ligature and the screw is on the top. But even with this ligature, you can see, and this and, these, and this seems random, except if you've tried, tried to do this before. Even with this ligature, you can see that there is a, make sure I, I hold, the right, hold, hold the right side up. There's a, there's a thin part and a big part, right? I don't want that to fall off. There you go. That fits over the mouthpiece, right? And with the Rovner ligature, you want to make sure that the screw, and pretty much all of them, you want to make sure that the screw is on the right side of the mouthpiece. It's a right-hander's world. That's a right-hander's world. Right? You want to make sure that and that in this particular uh, ligature, this the screws on the top. On most of your ligatures that, that you'll find that have the two screws and they're made of metal, those screws are on the bottom and on the bottom of the, of the reed and, and, and the mouthpiece, the, bo the bottom, let's see, the bottom of the mouthpiece, the flat side, with the screws on the, on the right-hand side still. So if I've had people come in recently, and, I, and I'm not sure where they get this from, where the you know, they have the ligature off to the side where the screws are like on the side of the mouthpiece. Uh, no, no, no. On the bottom. On the bottom with the screws on, on, on the right. Now, there you'll find that there's all sorts of um, configurations of ligatures depending on how much money you spend for the ligatures. But if you are just starting, you have a ligature that the screws are on the right-hand side on the bottom, okay? Right-hand side on the bottom. If I can remember when I edit this, I'm going to just put some some pictures in here so you can see that because I don't have one of those ligatures. Um, okay, cool. So when you are placing the reed on the mouthpiece, remember that we're going to place the flat part of the reed. You see, that's a, there's a curved part here. Can you see that that's curved? Let's put it this way. See how that's curved? And the bottom is flat. Take the flat part of the reed and put it on the flat part of the mouthpiece. Now, and I'm mentioning that, and some of you are going, uh, why are you telling me that? that? That seems to be common sense. I've had people who are trying to, who try to insert the reed into the mouthpiece. I'm not sure, I'm not sure what they were, I'm not sure what they were gonna do with it, uh, how they were gonna think to, to make that work. It doesn't go in there, it goes on there. And then as you are, scooching it up just just keep keep watching to make sure that the reed again is is flush flush even with the top part of the mouthpiece that it doesn't stick over or too far under because now if it's too far under I'm going to show you that if it's too far under and I and I had this this particular instance today. If it's too far under, then you can see that there's nothing banging against the tip rail if it's too far under. And remember, when the reed bats, bats against the tip rail, that's what makes the noise. If it's too far under, it's only batting against um, the tip rails, not the... Uh, here. It's only, only only batting against the side rails and not the tip rail. Okay, so it's even, so it's important. My experience that it is even with the top of the mouthpiece. All right. Uh, some people some people ask, well, how do you wet your reed? Should I so, should I soak the reed in water? Well, I'll tell you what. No, there's no there's no reason to soak your reed in water. Not even, not even if it's brand new. There really isn't. 
because the, the danger is that you are going to waterlog your reed and it'll get too wet and it'll be it'll be problematic right so you, so you don't want to waterlog your reed the best way i have found um and this is a secret so don't tell anybody the best way that i have found to wet your reed in the 40 years that i've been teaching and the 50 plus years i've been playing is right now you ready get your pencil out get ready to bookmark this part in the video ready there you go. You come as your body comes with as standard equipment a saxophone reed wetter. There you go. And you don't have to spit on it. You don't have to have to create a lot of extra saliva. This is saliva that's in your mouth. It is plenty. I like to sometime lick this part of the reed too, because it helps it stick to the table here of the mouthpiece. Cool. That's what I want. Okay. That's what I try to have my students do, and make sure again that it's even with the top of the mouthpiece. And that it's not poking over. Got it? Cool. Hold. Hold this part, the hard part, the shiny part of the reed with your thumb. Take your ligature. And very carefully place the lig ligature over the tip of the reed. And then pull it down. A lot of us have taken the ligature while putting it on on the mouthpiece with the reed there and taking a ligature and slice the reed right in half with it. We've all done that from time to time. All of us have. Uh, but you'll get but you'll get better at it, right? I like to slide the ligature down over the hard part of the reed. Now, the deal is you don't have to tighten it down like Hercules, you don't. You just want to you just want to have it so it doesn't move, but not too tight, right? If you have two screws, tighten the bottom fairly tight and just the top screw so it doesn't fall out. That's it. That's all you gotta do. Really, really, really simple. Then I then I'll take the mouthpiece like this and hold it in my hand with my neck. Hmm? And as I'm putting because we don't want to break the reed, they're not cheap, right? And now I want to just Scooch it on. You see where I have my fingers on the mouthpiece here? Away from the tip. And there we are. All done. Here's one more part, and I'll let you go. Here's my saxophone. And some of you who've, who've asked, this is a Yamaha 52. Yamaha 52 is a YAS 52. This, this, this saxophone is probably, oh my gosh, almost 30 years old. Make sure to pull out the cap. Keep the cap because it keeps this hole round while, it, while it's in the case. Unscrew that, that tension screw just a little bit. It doesn't have to come out. While holding, see, I'll... I'll I'm holding the uh, the neck here, and I'm just gonna. If it's clean, it'll just scooch down in there, and then I'll tighten it up so it doesn't fall out. So I, so I can do what I need to do. Pretty easy, right? If you're careful, you won't damage the octave key. If you're careful, go slow, especially in the beginning. And again, you don't don't have to tighten this for like a hurricane. You don't have to. I've seen some, some people tighten it so much that it breaks off. That's not the biggest disaster that ever happened, but it's not necessary that you do that. Okay? All right, there you go. If you have any questions, write them down in the comments. 
Just put that back here on the table. I had hoped to do something else and have an overhead shot, but I don't have the equipment for that. Uh, but uh, anyway, if you have any questions, just write them down in the comments. Just like always, I'll be happy to answer them for you. My name is Will Lawson. This is the Saxophone Factory. Until we see you again, keep practicing.